Now you get an automatic takeaway. Whenever you're doing a big job like this, never think about the whole job as a whole. It'll drive you crazy and you'll think it's impossible. But if you just concentrate on one job at a time, <clears throat> it, it's a psychological thing, I think. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to an, another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 170. Today we're going to be working on a, uh, a shed roof on the south side of the uh, Memphis Applegate shop. You know we've been in a shed roof frenzy for the last month. And I wasn't going to film this just like I wouldn't even film the other one. But uh, then I got to thinking, you know, there's a lot of things that we kind of skipped over on the... Uh, other shed roofs and, and we'll concentrate on those things we haven't uh, talked about yet. So let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. Let's do a little review. First we uh, built this shed roof on the uh, west side of the shop. Then we built this shed roof on the east side of the shop and uh, it's uh, larger, it's uh, 12 feet wide and uh, 30 feet long. And today we're going to <clears throat> work on this shed roof. This is the uh, shed roof that's uh, going to be on the south side. It is 30 feet long and 12 feet wide. You already saw me uh, putting the uh, roof rafters in uh, there during the intro. Um, right now I'm going to square this first roof raf rafter and then I'll line the other ones up off of it. So I cut me a little witness stick here that's five feet long and I will adjust, put my stick on the three foot mark and then I'll just move my Okay so now this first rafter is square that first rafter right there is really twisted. Look at that. I could uh, straighten it out, but uh, you know it's 12 feet long, so it's going to straighten out pretty easy. But I don't want to fool with it. I'm going to replace it. Here I'm putting a uh, a little angle, about five degrees, on the uh, rafter to uh, match the slope of the roof. Now the new uh, roof rafter I put in was uh, still had a little uh, warp to it, bend twist to it, but this is how you fix it. Uh, I had this this one here was uh, square, so I went ahead and attached it, and then put a clamp across there, and it took the twist out of the beam. Now, and since I'm fighting a uh, twisty board here. I'll make sure I put plenty of plenty of nails in it. Okay, I'll uh, take that clamp off and see if we fixed it. Huh. I didn't see it spring back at all, did you? I got the uh, Finding the centers of these rafters with the same marking stick that I used to find the centers of the joist hangers. I just run that along there and then that becomes my center line of my uh, rafter. Using the, uh, you know, the clamp, the clamp trick that I just showed you right here is just a trick I'm, I'm using because I'm working alone. If you're working with somebody, which you should be, um, you can just put a pipe wrench on the twisted uh, board and just pull it straight, have somebody hold it in place, and then just uh, nail it there. I got all the uh, roof rafters in. Took the twist out of about four of them, five of them. 
is the reason I was so animated about uh, taking a twist out of those uh, things. I uh, forgot to take the twist out of this one and it looks amateur hour. Okay, right now what we have is we have this uh, uh, inner brace up here. And now we need to put these, uh, these angular braces in. And once we get the angular braces in, then we can put this outer uh, brace in. Putting these braces in, I've got them marked out where I want them uh, because I want them all to be uniform when you look at them. Now here on the other side, you can see where this angle brace is. I'll put uh, about three nails right in there. And that'll tie the brace in with this uh, inner brace. There'll be a total of six of these braces. I'm uh, cutting them all identical and going to place them on the poles identical so that they'll have a uniform appearance across there. Tell you what, I'll go ahead and uh, install these, uh, these braces and then we can uh, do that front brace. Here I'm installing the outer, the outer brace. Remember the roof is uh, slanting so this outer brace is slightly lower than the inner brace. That's the reason you have to wait until you get the uh, roof rafters in before you install this. So I can push that right up against that uh, rafter. Okay, so at the other end, I only put one nail in because I want to rotate this. I want to rotate this beam up so that it's in full contact with uh, all the uh, rafters. I went ahead and put the um, the outer tie downs on uh, the outside, so now you can see there are tie downs on each rafter. Installing purlins is uh, pretty straightforward. They need to be here. I am on my east uh, shop. They need to be uh, no more than uh, 24 inches on center. Uh, but one of the things I'm I'm doing is I'm installing purlin nailers. So here you can see the purlin nailers. I got purlin nailers all along this uh, open opening here. And then if I go down to the other end, I got purlin nails nailers here. Um, not only do, do the purlin nailers, there you can see the purlin nailer right, right there. If you, can, if you can see down that far. Um, not only does it provide additional strength, but you can also use it as a guide for spacing the purlins. Now my purlin, I've got this little marking stick here. I just put it up here and mark where I want my purlin. This and here, I set it at 19 19 inches overhang and and line it up I'll line it up at this end and at the other end I can I can line it up on the purlin nailer because I already know it okay there's the um, 
purl and nailer down at the uh, west side and if I come down over here here's the purl and nailer we just nailed into you can see right there and there's that first 10 10 foot purlin now these boards right here that we're going to I'm going to put in place next are these 12 footers okay so there's no there's no measurement or anything else that's already been done so I just line it up I line it up down here and then I line it up down there see how that works okay now I can just now I can just nail it So now down here at the far end, all I got to do is mark the mark my spacing with my with my stick, put it back in my pocket, and then I can just align align this purlin with my purlin nailer down there. Got all the purlins in. Uh, I guess we can start worrying about putting some uh, roofing tin on our roof. This modern tin, most, most of it has two edges. It has, on, on one side it has this, this long, this big curve right here. And then on the other on the other side, it has this this short bend in it that stops uh, short of a you know the full diameter of this radius. And the question always is, well, what side do you put on top of the other? Well, this is this side here goes on top of this side here. Now. You may think, well, that, well, that's going to be hard to remember. Well, it isn't because you can see this little edge right here. This little edge right here goes down against the purlin. Okay, I won't uh, go over the pattern I'm using here. That's that really varies with the manufacturer. Um, this manufacturer wants a screw there, 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 and then uh, one down there. Uh, what I will show you is on these on these little screws you, you'll get. Uh, they're they're supposed to be self-tapping, and I guess they are. I don't know if my camera's showing this. Hope it is. Uh, you can get them to work. Uh, they're, just, they're just a pain in the butt. So what I do is I take drill and I pre-drill. Put these in because you don't want them. They have to be in there kind of perfect. And this uh, 12 volt driver is just about the right. Uh, pressure. You don't want them too tight and you don't want them too loose. The reason I don't do uh, a lot of this kind of work is because I'm old and I shouldn't be up on ladders. I'm deathly afraid of heights. Sometimes, sometimes I have to stop because I start shaking in fear.
She's really looking good. I'm not filming a lot of it because it's, it's really repetitive. You know, just a lot of screws doing the same thing over and over. I'll come back when some, something exciting happens. Well, we're getting down to it here. This is our last sheet. This will make our total roof here about 33 feet uh, long. You know, I want a little overhang here, but I think uh, this is too much. I think I'm going to take this piece of tin down and trim it. Kind of breaks my heart because I thought uh, we were, were down to it, but... But we got to do it right, I guess. I think what happened is that I based my calculations on a coverage area of, of three feet for these uh, sheets. But I think they're, I remember seeing somewhere that the coverage area was actually three feet and some fraction of an inch. So if you carry that over 11 sheets, um, you know, that could end up to be, you know, six or eight inches of extra. So that's what I'm cutting off now. Here's our, here's our roof all, uh, all finished. I was a little, uh, I was a little shaky up here at first, but after going up and down the ladder about 50 times, I kind of got over it. Okay, let's uh, go back down to the ground and take a look at her. Well, here's the underside. All the exterior pieces are all uh, treated. Uh, oversized deck wood, two by eights and four by sixes. We got double tie downs on all the uh, rafters. The rafters are uh, two by sixes. We used um, uh, two by fours for purlins. You can use one by material, but I like the uh, two by fours. Here's the outside view of it. really too big to get into one shot. Over there is our shed roof. It's about the same size uh, on the east side. Here's our south side and just right over there you can see our our first shed roof we built on the west side. All right, so uh, I think we did, uh, we did well, a lot of work, but I think it's going to be a, uh, a nice shop improvement program. All right, that does it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 170. Today we completed the uh, south side shed roof. That's, that's going to uh, make just vast, vast improvements. It means I'll be able to go outside uh, uh, I'll be able to have the doors open when it's raining and, and keeps the sun out of here and 
Um, it's just going to be, it's just going to be wonderful. I think. I got other projects I need to do outside, but we're starting to get some uh, uh, in-shop uh, projects that are kind of building up. So we need to uh, take a break from our shed roof projects out there and uh, and get some real woodworking. Okay, I think we got our money's worth today. Uh, uh, I don't recommend uh, doing this kind of construction by yourself. Uh, you know, if you fall off a ladder or something uh, and you're by yourself, uh, no one would know it. So, you know, you need uh, you really need to buddy up with somebody when you do this. Okay, that's all I got. Nope, one more thing. Uh, like and share and comment, and Facebook and tweet and post and tweak and poke and all that stuff you do on the internet. But most important, what is it? Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.